Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Moving Virtual Storage with SV Motion. In this lesson, I'll start off with what is SV Motion. From there, I'll cover the requirements to use it. I'll show you how Storage V Motion and Thin Provisioning work together before I provide you a step by step walkthrough of how to use Storage V Motion. And then I'll end the lesson with how to migrate virtual machines with snapshots, a new feature of Storage V Motion in vSphere 5. So, with that, let's get started. So what is Storage vMotion? Well, if you don't know what it is, basically it moves the storage or the virtual machine disk file of a running virtual machine from one data store to another data store. The virtual machine will stay on the server that it's on, unlike vMotion, and the memory for that virtual machine never moves, again, unlike vMotion. So really the point of Storage vMotion or SVMotion is to move the virtual disk only. So that virtual disk file could go, let's say, from a local data store to a shared storage area network. It could go from one storage area network to another storage area network. Or it could stay within the same storage area network and just go from one LUN to another LUN. So storage vMotion is a very powerful feature. And it's really, uh, next to vMotion, it's really one of the most amazing features to me of vSphere. Now, new in vSphere 5, there is a new storage distributed resource scheduler that actually takes advantage of what storage vMotion can do. And just like the distributed resource scheduler, it looks at the resources that are needed by virtual machines. And if a particular data store is experiencing high latency, it'll use storage vMotion to migrate the storage of that virtual machine to another data store that has lower latency. Now, I won't be going into Storage Distributed Resource Scheduler, SDRS, in this lesson because we've got a whole separate lesson that goes into how to use Storage Distributed Resource Scheduling with vSphere 5. This lesson is going to focus just on Storage vMotion. So what are some of the common uses of Storage vMotion? Well, it's used to balance the data store utilization like I talked about, and that could not only be performance, but it could also be space utilization. So if you're looking out there at a data store and it's starting to get filled up, you could actually move virtual machines that are stored on that data store to another data store that has more available space without causing any downtime to the end users using those virtual machines. It's a very cool feature of storage vMotion you know, if you think back to the physical server days, if a local disk was running out of space, you may have to shut down that server. You might have to do a database purge. You might have to copy files, uh, let's say, to another uh, shared storage area network. And none of that is going to happen with storage vMotion. It's going to keep your virtual machines and their applications up and running at all times, even if you have to move the storage for a virtual machine to another data store. It's also a great way to perform storage area network maintenance or swap out. So let's say you have an older storage area network. You're moving to a brand new SAN that you just uh, are swapping out on lease. And you need to move these virtual machines from one SAN to another, from the old SAN to the new SAN. You can use storage vMotion and the virtual machines never have to go down, even though you're replacing a storage area network. By the way, you could also use storage vMotion if you need to perform SAN maintenance. Let's say you need to swap out a storage array uh, processor, let's say, or maybe you've got some cache memory that needs to be upgraded or cache memory that's gone bad. You could move the virtual machines on that SAN off onto another SAN or even to the local disk on each ESX server, perform that SAN maintenance, and then move those virtual machines back. Storage vMotion is, like I said, one of the most powerful features of vSphere. Now let's move on and let's talk about the storage vMotion requirements. First off, to use SVMotion, you must have either vSphere Enterprise or Enterprise Plus licensing. Previously in vSphere 4.1, the moving of a powered on virtual machine with snapshots was not supported. But as you can see, I've crossed that out because that's a new feature in vSphere 5. You can now move powered on virtual machines and I'll be demonstrating that for you in just a little bit. You should note that to use the option change both host and data store, which you'll see when we perform a virtual machine storage migration, that virtual machine must be powered off. And in fact, that really isn't a vMotion or even a storage vMotion. Really, it's just the manual copy of the virtual machine disk file and then the deregistration of the virtual machine on one host and re-registration of the virtual machine on another host. 
Now the Migrate Virtual Machine Wizard does all that for you, but it's really not using vMotion or Storage vMotion to do it, and the Virtual Machine has to be powered off. And then the last point I want to make is that to move a large VMDK or a large Virtual Machine disk file, honestly, it can take a very long time depending on the speed of your network connection. So you need to take that into account. Now, of course, the Virtual Machine is up and running all the time, but of course, if you have a large virtual machine disk file, maybe it's 10 gigs, 20 gigs, or even 50 gigs, it could take a long time to copy that virtual machine disk file over your network. Before I show you how to perform a storage vMotion, let me quickly point out that storage vMotion and thin provisioning are related in the sense that when you choose to do a storage vMotion, you'll have the option to migrate that virtual machine disk file from a thinly provisioned disk to a thickly provisioned disk or from a thickly provisioned disk to a thinly provisioned disk. So that begs the question, why would you want to change to a thickly provisioned virtual disk if you're already using a thinly provisioned virtual disk? And the answer is fault tolerance. VMware fault tolerance requires that you're using thickly provisioned virtual disk, which of course are going to take up much more disk space than a thinly provisioned virtual disk. So you could actually use storage vMotion to perform this conversion from thick to thin. Of course, you could also keep the virtual machine disk file just the same, or you could choose to even reduce the disk footprint by going from a thickly provisioned disk to a thinly provisioned disk, utilizing less space in your storage array. Now it's time to give storage vMotion a spin. Unlike when we used vMotion where we changed the host that the virtual machine was on, this time we'll be changing the data store that the virtual machine's disk file is located on by using the change data store option inside migrate virtual machine. Let's go over to the vSphere client and give it a try. Here I am in my vSphere client and let's just say that I have a storage array out there that has two LUNs and one of those LUNs is starting to get filled up and I need to rebalance the load but I don't want to have to bring down my applications and affect my end users by balancing the load across these two LUNs on the storage array. To get around that I can actually use storage vMotion. So let's go ahead and take a look at the two LUNs first I'm talking about. If we go into the inventory and then into data stores and data store clusters. If we go to the data center level here, notice my different data stores. So I've got two local data stores and then I've got two LUNs on the same iOmega SAN. If we look at the capacity of these, notice that iOmega SAN LUN 1 actually has less free capacity than LUN 2. So let's go ahead and actually move a virtual machine from LUN 1 over to LUN 2. To do that, let's go back to the uh, host and clusters inventory here. And here I've got a virtual machine, a Windows 2008 Active Directory domain controller. And here I can either right click on this virtual machine and go to migrate, or I can just go down to migrate on the summary tab. Again, this is the same screen we used when we performed a vMotion, but now we're going to perform a storage vMotion. To do that, I'll check the second radio dial right here, change data store. So that's going to be a storage vMotion. And from here on out, we're talking about storage vMotion stuff. This is the fork in the road between a vMotion and a storage vMotion. I'll click Next here. And now we're given the opportunity here to do two things. First off, we can change the format of the virtual machine disk file. So I could leave it the same. I could choose to use a flat disk. I could choose to use a thick disk or a thinly provisioned virtual disk. Now I'm just going to choose to leave it the same format as the source, so I won't be changing the format of the virtual machine disk file, but you should know that storage vMotion is a great way to change the format of a virtual machine disk from thick to thin or from thin to thick. Now because I don't have virtual machine storage profiles enabled here, this option is grayed out, but we'll have another lesson on using the new vSphere 5 storage profiles. What I can do here is I can choose the destination for this virtual machine. So where do I want to move this virtual machine disk file to? Well, we said that it was actually on SAN LUN1. And if you move this out here, you can see LUN1, and it has less free disk space than LUN2. So what I want to do is I want to move it to LUN2. And notice down here, it's very important that the validation succeeded. So vSphere checked this out, and it said, yep, it should be able to move it from LUN1 to LUN2 without any downtime. Notice that thin provisioning is enabled on these, and if we go down, there is an advanced option here where you can actually choose to separate the virtual machine configuration file and one or more of the virtual machine hard drives. 
So in my case, I want to keep all these together, and I just want to move them from one sand LUN to another sand LUN. So at this point, we're ready to go. I'll just click Next here, and now we have a minute to review what's about to happen. We're going to move this virtual machine's disk file from one sand LUN to another sand LUN with the default priority and using the same format as the source. I'll click Finish here, and then let's go down to our task window. And you can see here we're performing a relocate virtual machine disk file. Here's the virtual machine, and it's 27% complete already. We can see here that we are migrating, let's check the status, migrating the active status of the virtual machine. And we've got a request time, a start time, and no complete time yet because we're not quite done. And this could actually take a little while here because this is a relatively large virtual machine. You can see about 13 gigabytes of uh, physical disk space has been used out of the 103 provisioned gigabytes uh, for the virtual machine. So it's a thinly provisioned virtual disk, but still moving 13 gigabytes across my lab infrastructure network um, isn't going to take a few seconds. It's actually going to take uh, quite a few minutes, in fact. So in the meantime, let's go back to our slides and let's move on to one more topic that we can practice while this storage vMotion is occurring. And that topic is migrating virtual machines with snapshots. So brand new in vSphere 5, you can actually perform a storage vMotion on a virtual machine that has snapshots. And this is really useful because it's very common to be using snapshots on virtual machines. And it's quite painful if you have some snapshots of an important virtual machine and you need to perform a migration uh, from one data store to another of its virtual machine disk file and you can't do it because you've got snapshots. Then you have to figure out, well, do I need those snapshots? Can I go try those snapshots? What would happen if I deleted those snapshots? Do I have a backup of the virtual machine? This way you can just do an SV motion, not even have to worry about the snapshots. The snapshots are just going to come along with it. So first let me go over to my vSphere 4 server and let me show you what it would look like on vSphere 4 if you tried to migrate a virtual machine that had snapshots. So here I am on my ESXi server that is actually vSphere 4. And if we go to virtual machines, notice the Vima virtual machine here. If I right click on this and then go into the snapshot manager, you can see I do have a snapshot in use. It's called before upgrade one. So if we right click on this again, let's try to migrate this virtual machine. And let's say we want to change the data store, which is a storage vMotion. And we want to move the virtual machine to SanLun 1 from SanLun 2 where it's located. It's already located on SanLun 2. And if we try to move it to SanLun 1, notice this big compatibility warning down here that says we cannot move a powered on virtual machine with snapshots. It's not supported by this version of vSphere. In fact, I can't click the next arrow here because this virtual machine has snapshots. There's no way I can migrate it until I delete or remove those virtual machine snapshots. So now let's go ahead and cancel out of this and we could either remove the snapshots or there's something else we could do. We could go ahead and migrate this virtual machine to a different host using vMotion. So I'm going to migrate it to a host that I know has vSphere 5. I'll click Next here. We'll use the high priority. Let's check on the virtual machine. And there we go. We moved it to a new host, as you can see. So now let's go ahead and try to migrate the virtual machine disk file. Again, I haven't removed any of the snapshots. I'm just going to try to change the data store. And let's go ahead and move it to SanLun 1. And notice this time it says the validation succeeded. I'm going to click Next. We'll migrate the virtual machine. This will take just a second. Notice it says here the active task is relocating the virtual machine's disk file. And there you go. As you can see, the virtual machine has now been moved using Storage vMotion to iOmega San LUN 1. So we move this virtual machine live without causing any downtime from LUN 2 to LUN 1. And in our case, we did that to better balance the capacity utilization of those two LUNs. But there's any number of reasons that you might want to move a virtual machine from one LUN to another in the real world. So we just verified that the new vSphere 5 feature where you can migrate a virtual machine using storage vMotion even though it has snapshots created actually works. 
So now let's go back and check on the status of our original storage vMotion of the Windows 2008 Active Directory controller. If we click on this virtual machine and then take a look at the storage over here where the virtual machine disk file is located, you can see that it's now on SAN LUN2. So now let's go to Task and Events here. And we can check on the Relocate Virtual Machine task here. It says it did complete. And let's check on the related events. And if we look down here in the details, we can see that we requested to migrate this virtual machine from LUN1 to LUN2. And it was successful. Of course, that's just one example, moving from one LUN to another. There's many other use cases like moving from one SAN to another SAN if you had to do a SAN replacement or if you had to shut down a particular SAN for maintenance, or even moving from local storage to SAN storage, or from SAN storage to local storage. There's just so many applications for using storage vMotion. So at this point, we were able to successfully perform a storage vMotion, as well as test the new vSphere 5 feature, where you can storage vMotion a virtual machine that has snapshots attached. So with that, let's go back to our slides. And that brings us to the summary for this lesson. We started off by learning about what storage vMotion is, how it's a very powerful feature of vSphere that allows you to move the virtual machine disk file of a running virtual machine from one data store to another data store with zero downtime for the end users using the applications on that virtual machine. Storage vMotion can be very useful when balancing the storage performance resources from one storage area network to another, or even from one SAN LUN to another SAN LUN. It's also a great way to balance the storage capacity utilization from one LUN to another LUN or from one SAN to another SAN. From there, I covered the storage vMotion requirements with the most important one being that you have vSphere Enterprise or Enterprise Plus in order to be able to use storage vMotion. I talked about how storage vMotion can be used to convert a virtual machine disk file from a thinly provisioned virtual disk to a thickly provisioned virtual disk or vice versa. From there, I showed you how to use storage vMotion with the Migrate Virtual Machine Wizard. We saw how easy it was to migrate the virtual machine disk file of a running virtual machine. And then we ended the lesson with how to migrate virtual machines with snapshots, thanks to the new storage vMotion features found in vSphere 5. Thanks for watching this lesson covering moving virtual storage with storage vMotion.